So, hi, good morning, everybody. I am uh, doing this Zoom today from Las Vegas. I had to travel here uh, yesterday morning really early on the 6 a.m. flight, and Robert and I went uh, to a, uh, we're at a, actually a business conference in um, Las Vegas, and yesterday they started, I guess, at around 8.30 in the morning, and they went all day, and there was lots of different speakers, but two of them I want to share some information that I um, that that was pretty significant to both Robert and I, what we listened to. And, you know, I want to preface it by saying that, you know, many, many years ago, Robert and I started going to business seminars and listening to different people from around the country and around the world, you know, really um, talk about, you know, why they're successful, how they're successful. And I know on this, on this Zoom, we've talked a lot about, you know, um, success leaves clues. And why would some person be more successful than another? And, you know, do they know something more than you know? And, 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 we all, and we're always looking for, you know, information. One of the things I can tell you is that one of the great things about going to um, certain seminars and personal development, things like that, is that you're reminded about the things that you believe that you are either wanting to do or you're trying to do or, you, or whatever. And, Yesterday, uh, we saw a guy uh, who was in real estate, who's very young and has become a millionaire in real estate. And then we also saw another gentleman who is an MBA legend, and he's also a businessman. And, and they both individually talked at different times of the day. And so one of the things that was interesting to me is that there was a Q and A with the uh, NBA player Magic Johnson, and you know some the the Q and A was phenomenal because you know people asked him about his career and the NBA and questions that you know every probably guy in the world would want to who is a basketball fan would want to watch, I mean would want to ask, and you know he he told stories he told a lot of stories about what you know, his life was like coming up and now where he is presently in the business world. And, and, uh, you know, people ask him, well, why do you, why do you come out and speak? You know, what, why do you do this? You know, you're so busy and whatever. And he said, well, I'm blessed. You know, I, I feel like I'm blessed and I feel like, and whatever that means to you, it, it wasn't, he wasn't being religious. He was just saying, I feel very blessed in my life for what's happened to me in my life. And I feel like I want to give back. I feel driven to give back. I feel compelled to share the things that I've gone through in my life. And, um, and it was great. It was so great to kind of witness that and be a part of that in a different perspective, you know. And the other guy was a guy by the name of Josh. Um, I'll show you his picture. You may or may not know him. It's Josh Altman. He's a, he's a realtor and he's on a show called, um, I guess, it's a real estate show, something like millionaire show or something millionaire real estate. I, I, I haven't really, I know Robert's watched it. I've seen a little bit of it. Um, but anyway, uh, what, what the theme of it seemed like from these two gentlemen was the people that are having the most conversations are winning in business. The people that are willing to talk to people are winning in business. The people that are winning to have a conversation, change a conversation, um, and, and I know that on this Zoom, all of us have talked about that, of, you know, um, we've talked about how you build a business, any business is by new people talking to people. And what is the big difference between somebody who's wildly successful and the people that maybe are just struggling to have that success or they're continuing to strive for that success? And really what it came down to was people talking to people. And having the fortitude and the willingness and the guts to talk to a lot of people. Because the, the main theme of what I heard from both of these people were that they created their own luck. They created their own success by the fact that they associated themselves with people that had what they wanted. So they surrounded themselves with really quality people. And it's interesting because this kid, I call him a kid, this Josh Altman, he's a, you know, he's a real estate mogul. He's a realtor. And what he does is he basically puts deals together and he puts people together. And the way that he 
had tremendous success was by basically putting himself, sitting himself in a situation that he was surrounded on a daily basis by the kinds of people that he wanted to do business with. So, you know, he was, I, I, I will tell you in my overall assessment of his, of his talk, I thought, I thought his content was really interesting and I thought his stories were interesting, but I thought he came off very pompous, but you know, he's, he's, he's young and he's, he hasn't really found his humility yet, but it was very similar to the fact that when Magic Johnson was talking, he was talking about his stories and his failures and things that happened and how he succeeded. And he came from a place of humility. And so the two dichotomy of that was really interesting to see, but they were basically talking about the same thing. And it was a running theme in success, okay? So successful people, we've heard this before, do what unsuccessful people aren't willing to do. And that was really the running theme of the whole uh, perspective that I got from these two guys. Both very, very successful in their own way, in their different ways, had many, 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 many failures uh, along the way. Uh, I know somebody asked Magic Johnson, you know, if you knew what you if you knew what you knew in business today, would you have applied that to anything in your basketball career? And I mean, he was a champion. He's, he's won, he's won uh, five rings as a basketball player. Uh, uh, and then another five rings, part of a, being part of the overall management team. And I mean, the, he's just an amazing, uh, anonymous, anonymously, anonymously, anonymously no of a person i mean you, you i never knew the things that he talked about uh I, i've never heard it in in his uh interviews i never knew a lot of the stuff that he talked about yesterday and but the running theme was basically you know i i really knew a lot about basketball i didn't really need to bring the i mean i brought tools from basketball into my business world but i didn't know anything about business i i and and yet he's been in one of the most successful business men in in the world right now and, and when you when you when he listed all of the things that he's involved in and the things that he's brought to to the world you and i i mean somebody may know about it but it was a shock to me i had no idea i had no idea what he did but one of the things that he said which was incredibly important to all of us and to me was he said i didn't know anything about business so i got myself mentors and I had lots of them. I had lots of mentors all around me. And they were for different reasons because I didn't really know business. I knew basketball. And I had uh, a thirst for learning. I and continue to learn. I am constantly learning. I'm constantly wanting to know more. I want to learn more. And so he talked about the passion that he had for learning and the people that he associated. So the two the two, the young guy, this Josh Altman and Magic Johnson, both kind of talked about the same thing. They surrounded themselves with people that knew way more than they did. And they basically mirrored what they did. The success leaves clues. They decided to make a difference in their business based on what, other pe what, they, what their mentors told them to do. So they were both millionaires. They were both involved in real estate and investments. They were both entrepreneurs and loved business. They were both successful and they were both speaking and motivating others and giving back. And their, their reasoning for giving back was that they felt like they had really been given such tremendous opportunity. But you know, the interesting part about that was, is they, they actually willed that opportunity into their life. They put themselves in situations to be able to take from their mentors and to really associate with the people that they thought were successful. And then they wanted to mirror that and copy that. And what did they do? They duplicated that. Okay. So what did, so what do they know that you don't know? So that was the question I was sort of saying to Robert, what, you know, I, everything that has been discussed here today has been, um, you know, basic stuff that we know. Well, the major point of that was, they don't know anything that we don't know. They know, we know everything that they know. The only difference between them and us or me maybe is if I look at myself is that they just like to implement things. They like to implement what they get to know and then they do it and they make it happen and they like to win. So they wake up very early and they go to bed very late based on their passion of who they are and what they want to accomplish at the time of what they're trying to do. So it's, you know, interesting to talk about, you know, well, how much time of the day do you have to work your side business or how much time of the day do you have to do with the things you're most passionate about? 
Um, the idea behind both of them was whenever you're focused in on building your business, you're doing that 24 seven. That doesn't mean you're doing 24 seven every single day of your life, but the time that you've devoted to doing your business, you're doing that with the heart and soul of 24 seven. You're not giving up. You're not quitting. You're not, you know, um, deciding that it's too hard. You, you are compelled to make that happen by not, not giving up until you get what you get right until you get what you got so the implementation was a big thing it was a great reminder of mine because i'm i'm an implementer i love imp implementing but it was the key things in my life that i implemented at a time it wasn't a million things it was one thing one thing that i implemented well and then i moved on and implemented something else well so i had you know ideas of what i thought were the most important in my business and then i was going to implement that and one of them uh, early on with Miriam was, you know, I wanted to bring people into the business <laughs> and I didn't stop. You know, it was never a question. It was like, are you kidding me? You want to be with me in this business because we're going to do something together and we're going to have a whole bunch of fun and we're all going to get cars and it's going to be fun and this product works. And I, I, I was unstoppable. I wanted people in my business because I knew that this was going to be something that was going to be different. And it was going to be exciting. And, and it was going to ultimately, if the person who decided to come into business with me, it was going to be something that they could build themselves and that they were the owner and they were the CEO of their own business. And that was exciting to me. And I remembered, why did I get people involved in my business? Why did I want people to get into my business? So here's the thing. They didn't know anything yesterday that I didn't already know. I got reminded of tremendous key things that I have done in my business and why I did them in my business. And I, I implemented key things, okay? So the key things in Nerium really are sharing the product. And, you know, it's interesting because the guy, Josh, uh, the young guy, the realtor, um, he put himself in situations where he really had to be a salesperson he had to sell real estate and he had to really put people together for the, the sale. And he had to go to great lengths. Uh, for some people it would be very, very uncomfortable what he did. You know, uh, he would, he, he would sit at Starbucks for hours on end at, in Beverly Hills because he wanted to be around people that had a lot of money and he wanted to um, share with them that he was a realtor. So he literally would, you know, Put, go up to people, just straight up to people and start talking to them about, you know, the fact that he was a realtor and this and that. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people don't feel comfortable doing that. But I was telling Robert, what makes Miriam so much easier is that all we have to do is show a picture. We don't really have to go and sell anything. We just need to show a picture. We just need to show a before and after picture to people that we know and people that we don't know. And and we get a reaction. And what we do with that reaction is really the basis of how we grow our business, right? So I was thinking about, you know, how hard it is for people to sell. I don't like it. I don't like, you know, I wouldn't be that guy like Josh going up to people and kind of tapping them on the shoulder and saying, hi, you know, my name is Josh and I'm a realtor. I, I wouldn't be interested in doing that. And a lot of people wouldn't be interested in doing that. But I would be interested in showing people pictures and I do like to start a conversation and I do like to start a conversation when I'm passionate about things, when I'm excited about things. So that's, you know, that's where you're at, you know, no, whether you've been in this business for five years or you've been in this business for five minutes, you want to build a team. You want to get people on your team. And that's something that as a mastermind group, we need to do. We need to focus on bringing people into our organizations. Yes, we want a ton of customers and yes, that's very important to our it's a side of our business that we absolutely need because that's our residual income, which is the key to this whole entire thing, right? But the only way to get a lot of customers and to build on that is by getting a lot of brand partners and people that you want to bring in the business. And so it reminded me why that's so important and why we have to be focused on bringing in new people because new people is the lifeblood of every single business on the planet. And, you know, Magic Johnson talked about that. He talked about what kind of person he brings into his companies and what kind of people he wants to be associated with. But the running theme of the whole conference yesterday was implementation, what to implement, when to implement it, how to implement it. You know, 
And that was a very key component because a lot of us start a new business or we're in a business and we're kind of struggling sometimes to decide what do we, what, what are best practices? What are the best practices that are going to move us forward in our life and move us forward in our business and move us forward? Implementing the right things are the key component, but you have to actually implement it. So you can't talk about, you can talk about it, but you can't just talk about it. You have to actually do it. Okay, and that's the key thing. So it's the process of putting a decision or plan into effect and executing the plan. So these are some of my personal notes from the day, and I, I'm not gonna you know, read everything that I wrote, but I wrote these things down because they were significant, okay? Josh, the realtor, he took his real estate test two different times and failed them both twice. He did not get his real estate license until the third time. Now, when you take your real estate license, you study for three different, um, you know, three different class courses. You have to pass those courses and then you take a, an exam uh, on all three courses. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of material. And it's not an easy test, especially now. They've made it even harder. But he said, you know, here I am. I'm a millionaire. I, I, make, I put millions and millions of dollars. He's done over 500 million in sales, in uh, real estate sales in a year. And he said, and I do that and yet I failed the real estate test twice. Okay. Before I got my real estate license. I also, I also went flat broke when I was 26 after becoming very, very successful in the mortgage business. Uh, the recession hit and I actually went flat broke. So not only did I fail my real estate test twice, but I was actually, before I even took my real estate test, I was a mortgage lender and I was doing very well and the recession hit and I went flat, flat broke. And the story that he told was amazing because he had bought a ton of stuff. You know, he's a young guy. He was 26 and went and borrowed Ferrari, all this junk, you know, all this stuff. But anyway, he said, I made luck happen. I worked 24 seven when I worked. I showed up to places that I knew the people I wanted to be in business were at. I started the conversation. I spoke to people. There was another gen gentleman on the phone. Remember we talked about last week about, um, you know, power notes this gentleman talked about how he sends out 15,000 power notes a year. He doesn't do it himself. He has a staff now of people because he does $200 million in business every year. And he likes the idea of a personal note. And a lot of people like the fact that they get a personal note from him. So power notes, he put a system together in his business. And the system is, is that he hires people to do those tasks for him. But at the beginning, he did it himself. He's constantly trying to improve. Both of these guys talked about that. Constantly trying to improve themselves and constantly seeking knowledge. Setting up partnership meetings. Duplication. Now, they're not in network marketing, but they wanted to figure out how to duplicate their, their, the, who they are as people and the energy. and the. Um, now, I will tell you, is it easy to find another person like Magic Johnson? No. No. You, you can't. You very difficult. But, but yet he said, I have, I found people that I will surround myself with that have the energy, that have the drive, that are excited. Is it easy to find those people? No, it's not. Um, and this guy, Josh, same thing. You know, He's found people to come and work with him. He has a partnership with an escrow company, with a lender, you know, with other realtors, with people that he wants, mentors. Is it easy for him to find those people? No, it's very, very difficult. But he doesn't stop. So they all follow a system and they over deliver. Magic Johnson talked a lot about over delivering, you know, and I think in business people always have said that, you know, I, you know, I under promise and I over deliver. Well, it's the same thing in this business. We want to over deliver when we have, we've over delivered a lot on the fact that we have these amazing products that work. Um, and as customer service, you, you definitely want to over deliver. You also want to over deliver with what you give to people and the things that you want to provide for them. Because I think that people that are in your inner circle and that are working with you deserve that. They deserve that from you to over deliver for them. Um, Manch Johnson said, I practice SWAT, SWAT, S W O T, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. And he said, I have so many mentors. I work hard to be good in business. Basketball, I knew. So there he was, he's a, he's a, million, a multi, multi, multi-millionaire in business now and with just stories you would not believe of what he has associated himself yet. But every day he says, I work to be good in business. I work hard to be good in business, okay? He's really disciplined, focused. Um, 
he said, I'm in the people business. They both did. They both talked about, I'm in the people business. You and I are in the people business. What does that mean? It means that, you know what? You got to talk to people. <laughs> you got to do that. That's part of it. You're in the people business. How do you align yourself with great people if you don't talk to anybody? You've got to put yourself out there. Okay. Um, I hire people that work like me. Uh, what, time of a what type of a team do you want to uh, build? I thought that was an interesting question. You know, find the people that are like you. Um, we have an amazing mastermind here. This mastermind started with three people last July after the conference. Um, I think it was Robin, Randy, and myself. And every day we would get out here and talk about stuff. Now this mastermind, you know, for any given day is up to sometimes 40, 50 people, sometimes 30 people, sometimes 10 people. Doesn't matter. But we have a mastermind of people that are like-minded that want to do something, right? That we're, both, we're all sort of deciding that we want to do. So I wanted to share that with you because what was most interesting about this experience so far, and today we're going to go see Jack Canfield, um, who's speaking, who I absolutely love. He, he's written a ton of books, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, so we've got a great day ahead of us today. Um, but, but I want you to know something that's really interesting to me. I've been involved with Nerium for five years and I've been to every single event that they have had. I went to their very first conference and I've always gone to every single conference. Yesterday, Robert and I were at this conference and they have some pretty big speakers here and, and certainly, um, a, a, a big room of people taking notes and doing what we do. And they're all striving to learn something, to be better, to have personal development, to have a, you know, a broader look at how to do business bit bigger and better. And I have to tell you that the quality of this conference compared to the quality of the conference at Miriam is unbelievably lacking, okay? The energy in the room is nothing like the energy in Miriam, nothing. The quality of the production nothing could compare to what I've experienced at Miriam. The, um, and I, and I, and I say that to you because Robert and I decided to come to this conference and it cost us each $250. It cost us a plane ticket. It cost us a hotel room and it cost us our meals. So pretty much probably a thousand dollars or more to come to this conference. It's not a Nerium related conference. It's just a business conference. We wanted to come and see, you know, what these guys had to say. And I will tell you, we are lucky at Nerium. We have uh, incredible speakers. We have people that know what they're doing. We have mentors that really have done this business and have done it very, very well. And for each and every one of us who it wants to build a business, you want to get to that conference this year because I'm telling you, Nerium does it right. I mean, I'm just comparing to you. I, I had forgotten kind of the conferences that I had gone previous to Nerium, but having been at this one, although the content is wonderful, it is nothing compared to what, what Nerium provides. And yet Nerium provides that uh, for a way less ticket personally, and they give you way more. So I, I wanted to kind of give you a perspective on that because I am just out of my mind about the fact that, you know, we need to get everybody we can to our conference this, in the next few weeks to, in July to St. Louis. It really does help in your perspective and, and really what you need. So anyway, the conference, um, you can get free tickets to the conference by helping people, free, free tickets for your new people. Uh, by, by helping them get started with Nerium this month, you can earn a free watch, which is amazing. And you just have to decide to do that. And that's what we're here today and every day as masterminds is that we are here to talk about how to do that and to showing up. And so I put here the regional for Southern California. I know there's regionals all over this month. Get yourself to a regional and get yourself to, to get your new people to a regional. Get them informed of what they've got here. Our regionals, by the way, are so amazing. And I, I tell you that the, the quality value of a seminar or going to something like that in Nerium is far surpasses what, what, uh, we have, uh, what Robert and I are at today. So I'm not just, 
I'm talking a little bit about just the quality of the conference, okay? So the getrealconference.com, I would definitely get yourselves there and, that, and definitely get as many people as you can because I'll tell you, it does give you uh, energy. It really does create a lot of energy and it also reminds you of what it is that you're you're doing. Why are you doing it? And, and, it, and it helps you to really breathe uh, a tremendous amount of energy into your business. And so if you have people with you that are in your business with you, you want to have them there. You want to figure out a way to get them there. So you guys, that's my talk today. I know it went a little longer. I was so, so excited to share with you what I learned. Um, and I hope that it was, um, you know, I hope it made sense to you. And uh, I look forward to giving you guys some more information tomorrow morning. I don't know if anyone has anything to, to comment or share. Otherwise, I think we should go out and get new people. <laughs> Annie, this is Janet. I have something to share. I just wanted to thank you again for just being out there and being intentional every day. And by going to this business conference that you just went to and sharing what you have learned just shows you that you're, you're living and breathing this type of, like the business, and Miriam is our business and that's what we all have in common as mastermind people. But it, it's what we do every day. And I mean, I'm just so inspired by you. And I just really want to thank you and appreciate you right now. And I, you guys, we are so blessed. I mean, not everybody in Nerium has what we have in what the, the Schwartz is and what Annie puts together every single day for us. And I'm just so thankful. Just wanted to share that. Oh, Janet, thank you, God. I agree. Janet, Susie, this is Susie. And, you know, I've been into other businesses like this, and Annie is absolutely right. The conferences are off the chart. The heart of this company, they want us to succeed so much. You know, I, I, I can see the differences too, Annie, in the conferences that I've attended over the last 20 years. And it's just, they want this for us, and they know we can do it. We just have to talk to more people. It's just true. We just have to find the great people out there, and they're out there. They're praying for it. They're all looking for what we have. So what a gift we have to give away. Thanks a million, Annie. You are a gift to all of us, and we want you to know how much, as Janet said, we love and appreciate you. This is extraordinary. This is unusual, and we have Annie and Robert right here to help us and pull us along and and uh, lead the way. Thanks a million. Thanks, Susie. I feel the same way about each and every one of you, really, honestly. I have to echo that. I have to agree and just say thank you, Annie. You know, you're, the one thing about Annie is that she's consistent and persistent, and that's all it takes, guys, is just being consistent and persistent in everything you do because that makes it work. Thank you, Annie. You're awesome. Thanks, Randy. I, I really appreciate that, you guys. Well, you know, I really want us all to succeed. And so what I'm just seeing here is that success leaves clues. And everybody that's out there, we're, all of us that get, that, that get on this Zoom together and we help each other, by the way, we're all successful people and we can all make this happen. We just need to talk to more people and we need to bring people into our business because we do <coughs> have something special. So thank you very much. I can't believe, Annie, how you went to go to this seminar. I'm sure it was all-encompassing, and you still found time to prepare slides and this talk for us. You are an amazing person to give us that kind of gift. Well, Carla, I will tell you, I took a lot of notes yesterday. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> I took so many notes. I was so inspired. It was so great, you know, and it was something that all of us, we all do this every single day, so... I thank you for that, but I really, it wasn't that difficult. Um, it was just my notes. So, uh, and I'm always happy to share that. So, uh, all right, you guys. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for showing up today and I'll have a lot more stuff for you tomorrow. Have a great day. Thanks, Annie. Have an awesome day. Can't wait to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bye. Bye-bye.